All right, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how to make non-digital measurements. You heard a little bit in the last video there about how non-digital measurements include things like using a flat surface and looking at them at eye level and reading the lowest point of the meniscus. But the part that's trickiest for most students is, is looking at a device like a graduate cylinder. And I've got several of them here. Uh, oops, get back to the right page. Not sure what happened there. We'll get to the practice here in a minute. I've got several graduated cylinders here that, that are all different sizes, it's different capacities. Uh, you may have worked with many of these before. I've, I've got one here that's 100, uh, then 10, and then 1,000 milliliters. And then the next page, a few other devices that have different capacities and, and different graduation lines on them as well. What I want to have you sort of understand here is that most of these devices will have what we call major divisions, which would be like the labeled lines on the, on the uh, device. And then the minor divisions would be the lines that are marked but don't have numbers next to them. And then there's a way of understanding then what that means in terms of estimating the nearest decimal place or to, the, to the, the amount of precision that you're limited to estimate to. And so I want to go through just a few examples with these and let you get a sense of like what kind of readings you could take from a given device. And then we'll look at some examples that actually have fluids in the pictures and you can make the actual measurement then. So on this first device, we call this a graduated cylinder. It's a cylinder in shape, obviously, and it has graduations on it or other little lines that are marked on there to tell you exactly what the quantity of, of liquid that's in there would be. And so the major divisions here are by tens. So we have major, major divisions to the nearest 10. So 10, 20, they're marked by tens. The minor divisions then, of course, on this device are marked, if you look closely there, they're marked in between the 10 and the 20, there are enough marks that each of those represents one milliliter of, of, of uh, fluid. And so the minor divisions are to the nearest one milliliter. The major divisions are to the nearest 10 milliliter. The minor divisions to the nearest one milliliter. If that's the case, what I need to do is estimate to the nearest what? And that's a question of going one decimal place or one uh, place further than the nearest one. If you remember back to grade school and you learned about places, you learned about hundreds and thousands and millions, uh, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, those kinds of things. We've got minor divisions here to the nearest one. So we have we have minor divisions in the ones place. That means we want to go one position more precise than that. And one precision, uh, one, one digit more precise than that is to the nearest tenth. So we want to estimate to the nearest 0.1 milliliter. So on our device, since there are lines here, for example, if I was to zoom in really closely on this, I would recognize that this line is, is one mil, uh, sorry, 11 milliliters. Uh, for example, this line is 14 milliliters. Uh, this line up here is 24 milliliters, etc. Get the idea. If that's the case, then we can, between the different divisions that are given there, we can estimate one place further than that. And what, what the idea is, is that you would be able to look at this and say, I can see the space between 11 and 12 is right here. Here's 11, here's 12. Between there, in my mind, I have to be able to estimate that there's sort of 10 invisible smaller divisions that I can kind of imagine are there in my head. And using those smaller divisions, I can estimate uh, what's going on with the, the tenths place. And that's what I want to be able to do. So for example, um, a, an estimate or a, a reading I'm able to make would be like 11.3 milliliters. That would be to the nearest tenths place or 55.7 milliliters. And there's tons of different examples you could write. The key is that they should all have, our examples should have a value in the tenths place because that's our um, allowed estimated reading here, but not um, any further than that. You can't go any further than the tenths place is the idea. So that device has a limitation of to the nearest tenth. Now that's pretty precise. It's actually a pretty good measurement. But there are devices that would allow us to go further and some that allow us to go less. So on this picture, the second one here on the page, we've got major markings here labeled to the nearest ones place. I've got lines for one, for two. So to the nearest one milliliter, I've got lines. To the nearest one milliliter, one, two, three, four, five, six, up to ten. I've got smaller divisions here. If you look here at the close, closeness of these small lines in between, I've got lines here, one, two, three, four, and then there's five sort of spaces then in between each of the major divisions. So those lines would represent 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, .1 and then 2.0. So our smaller divisions there represent a marking of the nearest 0.2 milliliters. So we have, for example, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, and so forth. Now this is a little trickier. The idea is here that we would need be able to we'd be able to say that between 1.2 and 1.4, I would be able to, I would want to be able to divide that into 10 smaller pieces of my own. So what are the 10 smaller pieces that would be between 1.2 and 1.4? 
and 1.4. Well, it would be increments of 0 0.02. So for example, I could have a re reading of 1.22. I could have a reading of 1.24, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30. I'm just realizing now that I kind of put those in the wrong space. So I'm going to move those, those values down here as, as example readings in the bottom box. But if you get the idea and so forth, these would kind of go up to then the, a, a value of, say, 1.38 could be on there. And even 1.40 would be a valid measurement, as would 1.20, as the lowest sort of in that little range that we're talking about there. So we can go to the nearest 0.02 milliliters. In other words, if you notice that we've got a pattern here so far going from our, our minor division here of 1 down to 0.1, I'm just dividing it by 10. And going from 0.2 down to 0.02, I'm dividing it by 10. We always want to imagine 10 smaller subdivisions in that smaller space, in that gap right between the, the subdivisions that are marked. There are 10 invisible, unmarked subdivisions that you need to be able to estimate. So take whatever your minor division is and divide it by 10, pardon me, divide it by 10 to get to the nearest uh, estimated value that, you, that you're allowed to put down for that device. Let's look at a couple more. On this device, <clears throat> this is a 1,000 milliliter graduated cylinder. So these are quite long, as long as, as, as uh, my, my forearm for sure, if not a little longer than that, all the way up to 1,000 milliliters. So this can measure out to a liter. And we'd use this for, for preparing large volumes of solutions up to a liter. So this has got markings for every major marking for every hundred. Every hundred milliliters has a marking on my graduated cylinder. The minor divisions, if I look here, between 100 and 200, there are lines for every 10. So there's a line that's, that's marked here at 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, and so forth. So I have markings at every 10. That's pretty typical that the major divisions are divided into either 10 parts, or as we saw in the last one, they're divided into five smaller parts. But let's take that and divide it by 10. So to how, how precise can we be? We're going to take this and we're going to divide it by 10 to get down to one milliliter. In other words, we can estimate on this particular device, we can estimate down to the nearest one milliliter if we had a fluid in there. And we'll look at an example of that. So a valid measurement on this between, one, uh, between zero and 1,000, we can go to the nearest one milliliter. So we could measure out, say, 253 milliliters. That would be a perfectly valid reading on this graduated cylinder. 707 milliliters to the nearest one. What wouldn't be allowed? Let's just clarify what wouldn't be allowed. You couldn't say 253.2 milliliters. That's not okay because the, the device can only be as precise as this estimated kind of limit. And that's saying that since the smallest lines that are labeled are to the nearest 10, you can estimate 10 times finer than that down to the nearest milliliter. But you can't go down to the nearest tenth of a milliliter. That would be like taking a small space on this marking here, on the markings. That would be like taking the space between this mark and this mark, if you were holding this graduated cylinder in front of you, and, and imagining in your head that there are 100 small lines between those markings that you can see, because you have such amazing eyes that you can see 100 divisions. It's just not possible. It's not realistic. The finest resolution that your eyes, as amazing as they are, are allowed to have is, is dividing that space into 10 smaller spaces. So estimating it down to the nearest, in this case, one milliliter would be acceptable. Okay, 253.2, that would be too precise for our, for our readings here. Okay, let's look at a couple more on the next page here. And if you get it, great. I want to show you, though, this one more device for sure, because we do make pre precise measurements on these next devices somewhat often in chemistry. If we were having lab chemistry uh, on, on certain uh, techniques later in the course, and we use these a lot in AP chemistry as well. So they're another, a device that you might work with as you go on to more advanced sciences in your life. This is called a burette, and there's lots of different spellings for burette. I usually use burette as this. Sometimes you'll see it spelled with E-T-T-E. -T -E. Sometimes you'll see burette spelled with an I. Uh, I think this is an acceptable spelling. So a burette. You'll find out this is a little bit unique in a burette, that the numbers are labeled sort of what we would say is upside down. The zero is at the top of the burette. I've taken the, the burette, it's long and skinny. These, these are as long as like a meter almost. And, and they have uh, many fine lines on them. And so all I've done is I've taken the top of it and the bottom of it, and I've sliced the middle out, put them in here, because it's really hard to print this on a page and let you see it if I don't chop out the, the pieces in between. So we're missing in between here seven and 46. That part's been sort of removed in the graphic. So we would fill this with a fluid. We'd fill it with a liquid that we wanted to use for the analysis. 
and we would, we would want to be able to uh, read off the initial volume and the final volume. But we'll get to that when we get to titrations later in the course. But for now, we need to be able to read this like we would read the other devices we were looking at a minute ago. If you look at this really closely, and they even printed it on this particular graphic, this has lines to the nearest tenth of a milliliter. So each of these little fine lines marked in here, the major divisions are for every one milliliter, one, two, three, up to 50. The fine lines are down to the nearest tenth of a milliliter. So our major divisions are to the nearest one milliliter. Our minor divisions are to the nearest tenth of a milliliter. We can estimate one place further than that. And this is a really super precise instrument as a result. If we take that and divide it by 10, we can actually estimate our readings off of this down to the nearest hundredth of a milliliter. And that makes this the most precise instrument we'll use in this way in a chemistry course. They're just super duper precise. There are some volumetric pipettes out there that you can buy for super tiny volumes. We would use those probably more likely in say a molecular biology setting or a biochemistry setting where you might be, might be able to measure even down to the thousandth of a milliliter. But that's not quite the same kind of device that we're talking about here. So this is the most commonly used super precise instrument of this, of this sort in a chemistry setting, especially at the high school or even AP chemistry level. So the allowed of precision is to the nearest 0 0.01 milliliters. So I could estimate and read, for example, 1.27 milliliters. I could read off 1.28 milliliters. I could be that precise. A hundredth of a milliliter is, is less liquid than, a, than you find in a tear. So we're talking about a super duper tiny little bit, the smallest of raindrops here that have a volume of 1,000 or rather 100th of a milliliter. Something like that would be acceptable. So 47.29 milliliters, 16.87 uh, milliliters. So for example, again, anything with two decimal places would be okay. And just the same in this case, uh, an ac accept acceptable reading could be 4.00 milliliters. They might look at that and say, well, are those zeros really necessary? And they are, because when you're using a device that allows you to go to two decimal places, it's important that all of your readings have two decimal places on them, even if they are zeros. Because if you just wrote down four, four milliliters, okay, well, that's a valid measurement in some cases. But four milliliters means that you're only able to go to the nearest one milliliter. What kind of a de device does that? We'll go back to the previous page. This big graduated cylinder, which is great and has its purposes, but is not at all very precise compared to what we were just looking at. This can go to the nearest one milliliter. That's not all that impressive. We've got a device in a burette here on the back page that, that is allowed to go 100 times more precise to the nearest hundredth of a milliliter. And so if you're making a measurement like exactly four milliliters on this device, you need to say so. It's 4.00 and I'm really, really certain. I'd want to be that precise because in this case, there's a big difference between 3.97 and 4.00. You wouldn't be able to tell that difference on that graduated cylinder on the other page, but on a burette you can, and that's super important to remember. All right, a couple more examples. If you think you get it, you can certainly jump to the next video in the practice. But this, the markings on these are just a little different. So this beaker on the left, and I wanna point out that beakers are a terrible device to use for measurement. They're just rough estimates. They're really imprecise. So we don't make official, super important, like, End of our end of our lab and, and super uh, sort of conclusive measurements using a beaker. They're roughly uh, 100 milliliters. They're roughly 200 milliliters. You wouldn't use these to make really official measurements. They're just kind of casual, approximate measurements. Um, so if you need to be precise, a beaker is not your choice. But it does have an approximate volume, and sometimes that's useful too. So the major divisions on this uh, beaker on the left, this is what we call a 150 milliliter beaker, which means that if we filled it like right up here at the top. It has a capacity of 150. The major divisions that you can see on here are marked at, uh, at, at 40, 80, and 120, so to the nearest 40 milliliters. The minor divisions here, this would be a 60, this would be a 100, so they're to the nearest 20 milliliters. And if we divide that by 10, right, we get what? Well, that's, that's divided by 10. We can only go to the nearest 2 milliliters. So I can make a measurement like, say, 42 milliliters or 66 milliliters or 108 milliliters but I couldn't do much more precise than that. So this is a very limited picture. On this other guy, we have major divisions at the nearest 50 milliliters. We don't have any kind of minor divisions, so we have to take that and divide it by 10. So we're allowed to go to the nearest five milliliters with this device. And so that means I can make a measurement like 75 or 90 or 115 or something, but that's as precise as I could get to the nearest five. Not very precise at all. And just one last picture here is this one. 
This one has major divisions at, the, at every sort of 200 milliliters. It has minor divisions at every 100 milliliters. So we have minor divisions at 300 and 500, et cetera. Okay? And so then we can take that and divide it down by 10 and get down to the nearest 10 milliliters. So a measurement that would be acceptable on there would be like, say, 220, 370, something like that. Not a very precise instrument at all. So you can see on these two pages, we have a range of devices that allow us to go from anywhere to the nearest 10 milliliters, to the nearest 5, to the nearest 1, to the nearest 2 tenths of a milliliter, perhaps, or 10th. Um, all the way down to the nearest hundredth. And so depending on your, your needs in a particular lab, different devices are good or bad depending on your needs. If you're trying to just mix stuff or heat things, then a, a beaker is a great choice. But if you need to measure things, a beaker is not your choice. Use a graduated cylinder. Use the best one you can use that has enough room for what you're trying to measure. Uh, or use a, a, a pipette or a burette like we saw here that has super precise measurements when that's what you need. We'll go to the next video in a minute, and that'll be all about practice on some examples that actually have fluids in them. We'll see you then.